Hi everybody, this is Diane. I am working on a new journal project today. I actually will be working on two, um, using two different kits from Creative Boutique. I bought these kits back in December of 2019 and they are no longer available, at least um, as, whoops, I'm sorry, at least as individual kits. Um, I did not check the bundles to see if these two kits are in the bundles. But I wanted to use these two gorgeous book covers that I've had for a while. And I love them and I just, I need to use them before I do another de-stash because I'm not de-stashing these. So one of the kits that I got is called <coughs> Parisian Cafe. And they both feature Harrison Fisher ladies. By that I mean he's the artist that painted these ladies uh, back in the day. I don't know the time period, early 1900s, I believe, which matches the book covers. Um, so this one has peach and green and some yellows and some blues. And I'll talk more about the pages of these kits in a moment. And the other kit is uh, My Fair Lady, and it has a kind of a red or burgundy red and a little bit of green and some pink and some Harrison Fisher ladies again. Um, now I don't know what country this designer is in. Creative Boutique. It's C-R-E-A-T-I-F. Um, but apparently it's I don't understand A5 papers versus U.S. papers and all that. So when I bought them back in 2019, I just went ahead and started printing them. Let's see if I have an example here. And then as I'm printing, all of a sudden I realized... I wonder where they are. I, I, I realized that part of the paper was being chopped off. That wasn't giving me the whole image. And so I stopped printing. So I just have a mess. I'm not going to go into everything. I was frustrated. Um, like this one. No. Yeah, because some of it's chopped off. Some of this is chopped off. On the, like it doesn't have the border like it should. So I've just put it all away. And now I've finally gotten around to wanting to work with it. And I had to painstakingly copy and paste each image and every card, every pocket was its own image. So I had to copy and paste every image for both kits and then I would, I could um, fit to size, fit to page size when I printed. Otherwise I, I just, I don't know how to. So this is how I had to do it. So then they end up being wide and short. So I still had to trim just a little bit off of the front edge of, of this one at least. I haven't really looked at that one. And it's a little bit short. So some of the original papers that I printed I went ahead and cut taller. <laughs> so anyway, it's it's kind of gotten complicated and I've I probably will never use this these kits again, although I love them. But I, I, it's just me. I don't understand computers like a lot of people do. So, I, but I think they're the perfect fit for these books. So, I have picked out some papers. I'm going to use some of the book pages. All of the book pages have this border on them. So I have my pieces cut. I've got some cards and some pockets. It's not a lot of ephemera with this kit. There's more with the other one. And I have my pages in two different sizes. This is from the book. It says Christmas 1911. And I have some coffee dyed paper. And I just wanted to let you know, I'll put a plug in for, I have gotten coffee dyed paper and tea dyed paper and other dyed paper from Nine of Crones on Etsy. So I get both coffee and tea. I like them both. So this one is, these pages are from the coffee bundle. Some scrapbook paper and I could 
coffee dye them, but I think I'm just going to stencil them instead. And um, so I have three of the thin papers and then three cardstock pattern papers um, that can be like the front of each signature. And I have some images. So these, this is Harrison Fisher art. Yep, illustrations by Harrison Fisher. So this is his art and the illustrations in the kit are his. And then I will make journal cards or something with these three images that came out of the book. And I paid quite a bit more for this book um, because because of the quality of the book, I guess. And I, I loved it, so I paid it. So anyway, that's what I have. And I have some laces picked out and some fabrics picked out. I'm thinking we might do some Maybe pick out some laces to go on the front of the signatures and maybe work on making some fabric flips. Now this one, a million a minute, is 1908 and it's illustrated by Will Graffay. And so I have some of those also. I don't, I don't think... Yeah, this doesn't belong with this book. I think I just had these all tucked in here because I was making digitals with some of these. That's a different book. This one is from this book. <laughs> I don't I don't know why that's in there. I have the dusk jacket from the book. And some of the pages. So I will put some of these illustrations in also. I wrote on the backs of some of these as I was making digitals, what book they went to. So these don't go with this book. So I will make some things with the pages from the books. So this one has some pockets and also some circles and little tags and little fussy cut pieces. It was a lot more and library pockets, but I think because I had to resize them, all my pages so that they would fit on my American paper that the library pockets are smaller than maybe they would be in Europe. I don't know, but they're tiny, tiny, tiny little library pockets. And that won't even fit in there. So anyway, they're, they're just beautiful. I love them. I love the colors here. And I picked out, I didn't cut yet, but I picked out some scrapbook papers to go with this. And I have the coffee dye paper. That's that's about all I'm going to add for pages. I might add a doily. Let's stick a doily in there or something. Let's um, let's put our papers in order. And then maybe pick out some lace to go on the edges. And then maybe we'll have time to do some fabric flips. So I have these shorter ones, and I have three taller ones, and six coffee dyed, three of the cardstock ones, and I'm going to remove one of these blue. I think I'll take that one out. If I have two, four, five, six, seven pages. So I guess I do need to put a couple more pages in of something for each signature. But I'll, I'll get to that. I might get some ledger paper or music paper, but I can stick that in. So I'm going to choose one of these to be the opening page when you open up the journal. And then one of these. I'd like to have a lady in the front if there's one with a lady on this side of the page. Yep, there's one. She's cute. Sipping her lemonade.
we have a lot more of the digital pages than any of the others, so I'll put them every other page. Then I'll, I'll put ledger or maybe ledger and music paper kind of in between some of these. Yeah, because I'm going to have, wait, yeah, I'll have two of these in each signature and one of the taller ones in each signature. So I'm all done with these for this signature. And I'm done with that, and I have one more of these to put in. Yeah, so that's, that's all I have for the signature right here. But like I said, I'll get some more other types of paper to include. did bring some lace over so we can look at some lace that might go on the front. These are all vintage ones. I didn't bring, well, these aren't vintage, but I didn't bring over any of my Hobby Lobby spools. I thought this one with the roses might look nice on the front, one with more red tones in it. Maybe this, oh, I like this cream color. I also like this peach for the peach colors that are in this book that we're doing. Okay, I think I'll put this one on the front. We're not gonna do that in this video since I'm not at my sewing machine. for all three. Do the same lace. Yep. Okay, and then I'll put I'll put another one. over here somewhere, but I don't need to know exactly which page, I just need to know the length. So I might as well go the full length, even if I decide to put it on the shorter page. I can always trim it. I just want to see what this would be like on the edge of a page. I think that's pretty. It's definitely pretty there. I think that would be all right.
got my laces picked out for the edges. I have a wider lace peach in this color that are wide I might use for pockets or pocket embellishments or something. Let's look at some fabrics for flips. I went through my fabrics and I was looking for, I had both color palettes in mind. So I'm going to pull out a page that shows more of the colors of this journal. So I think I had the red one in mind for that. This one could be for either one, but it's got the burgundy red. That was easier for me to find stuff for. I thought of this journal with this fabric though that my friend Debbie gave me from her mother's stash. Looks like an Art Nouveau or Art Deco, one or the other. It's got the pretty lady on it. So I might, I'd love, love to use a piece of that in there. Apparently I didn't pull out much else for this, for this one. So maybe I could use that. I think I was looking at that peach background here and that might work. I don't know if I've ever done a fabric flip while you were watching. If I ever, I'm not going to sew it, but if I've ever, you know, put one together. I have some ironing to do later, so I'll iron that piece before I sew it into the book. I washed all of those luncheon napkins and drink coasters that I picked up at the flea market yesterday, so I have a bunch of ironing to do. Now I lost where this came from. Oh well. it came from here. Maybe. I'll figure it out later. I just want to check the size. This is pretty big for this little book. I think I'll just use my pinking shears. I think what I might do with her, she won't go on the front, but I might just leave her and put put a little lace on it, or I could put some lace fabric behind, but I don't know if I want to do that. Let me pick out some lace to go on the flip. I could just take, there's a peach color. This is wide, so I don't want to put it on top, but I could put some on the side. Like so. this gorgeous piece of trim. I thought that would look good in that red 
in the red book also. I have a lot more for the red than I do for this one. Oh. I might put this on. And that should be enough for that. I don't want to detract from the image that's on it. I'm just going to pin everything together. I'll remember where it all goes. Next. Take a look at this one. This is more pink than peach, but there are pink, pinks. It's a peachy pink. Maybe that's why I think it's peach. But I actually, now looking at it, I see pink. But the flowers have a pink peach tone, and so does the background. The pink itself tends more to peach than red, I think. But I think that's a good color. Thank you all for your answers to my question in the video that was posted today. Um, today, as I'm filming this, it is Tuesday. But I posted the question on my video about the silences. Should I fill? Because I talked about my speech class and we were told not to leave silences. But I think a video is different from doing a demonstration speech. And I didn't hear anyone say that you wanted me to talk nonstop. You all said that you appreciate the silence, and, or you don't mind the silence at least. Which takes the pressure off of me to try to not say something foolish just to fill in space. So I appreciate you answering my questions. It helps me a lot to know how to serve my customers, or not my customers, my viewers. Some of you are customers. I think that's a pretty little flip. I often will use multiple fabrics, but I think these are decorative enough that I don't want to um, detract from them by adding more fabrics. I need one more. I've got to use that one. And definitely I'll have to iron this. This one might have come from my friend's mother also. So I think for this, I'll just use a little bit of this one. But I certainly don't want to cover up too much of this fabric.
still a little too wide. There, three fabric flips. Let me look through my clusters that I already have put together that aren't sewn yet. I might have some clusters that are already done in case I want to use clusters. I have this little container with things that are all pinned together but not sewn. It's upside down. It's a possibility. I like that if I change the sari. I'll put a different kind of a lace on that. I'll just leave that there to remind myself that I need to replace replace it. That one might work if I replace the daisies too. If I don't find anything else that is compatible. This would work with the red one. And that one. And that one. Possibly because there is blue in here, I might replace the teal. It's a good thing they're not sewn together yet. Or maybe if I use this one, I don't have to replace the teal. That one's really pretty. pretty delicate. Maybe this one has peach. I would just want to take the purple flower off. I could replace it with a white daisy. I think we have enough. I think I can stop searching. Unless I want to add that one. No. Okay. 
oops, got to leave those out. And I think there are some in here. If I don't use them in here, I can use them in the other one. So I think I have enough for both. And I will have to stencil. I'll do that before I start sewing to the pages. And I've still got a few minutes. And my camera time. Oh, I forgot. When I was at Walmart this week, I found a giant drawing pad, like a sketch pad, like I used to use. I used to use the kids' um, like doodle pads or sketch pads, and then I couldn't find them anymore. And I paid more for this than I wanted to, but it really is handy for me to have a big sheet on my desk when I'm stenciling and inking and stuff like that. I couldn't even find them. I bought one on Amazon once, I think, and then I couldn't find them there anymore. But I was just looking for something else in that aisle at Walmart, and I was like, holy cow, they have the big sheets. So I grabbed one. I don't want to go overboard with stencils. I just want one or two different designs. I, I've used this one a lot, and this one is kind of similar, but it's newer, so I'm going to use that one, and I love that one. Sometimes I like to accentuate, or accent, the main image with just some speckles. Maybe I'll just stamp some speckles. I don't need a stencil for that. Scattered speckle. I like that one more than that. So let's try that. Start with this one. Let's try this cameo pearl and see how we like this color. I like it. This is Stampin' Up! Cameo Coral. I know my hand's in the way. I often love to use two different stencils on one page to give it extra texture. Put the ink on this side so you can see more of what I'm doing. It's nice and pale so you can still write on it. And then to add some speckles, see what crumb cake looks like. It's a, can you see that color? Kind of a tan, light tan. I don't want to stamp too hard. 
Just a few speckles here and there. That's that is the wrong one. That's better. I don't want it to look like a square of speckles, so I can kind of overlap it. And I don't want to get carried away with the speckles either. Often also like to just put a little bit of color around the edge of the page. So I'm going to use, see if there's any color left on there. Looks like a little bit of green. So I'll just put a little bit of the crumb cake around the edge. So I don't use that anyway for edging. I'm not going to do it all the way around because my stuff on my table rattles. I don't like to do it on video, but you can see the effect. So I have a bit of stenciling to do. I have one, I think I have two pages in each signature. The stencil on. Might as well do one more with this stencil so I still have some time. I'm just going to stick with the same two colors throughout. I'll just put this kind of in the center of the page. All of my Stampin' Up! ink pads are old, but they last. This is really old. That's a foam or a felt pad, and they don't have them anymore. They haven't for years, and it still is coloring very nicely. They have foam, or I, I guess, I, I don't know if it's foam, but it's a squishy pad. Those are the new ones, newer ones. I feel like uh, whenever I start a journal, most times when I start a journal, and I have my pages selected and my and all put together, collated, then my next steps are usually, if I haven't copy dyed, I will stencil the white pages, and then I will sew the lace on the edges of the pages and add the fabric clips, and that's like con that's like putting together my. Um, 
uh, foundation for the journal. Because that's pretty much what I do for most journals. Not every journal, but most journals. So once I have the stenciling done and sewing on the laces and the fabric flips, then I get to start decorating with embellishments, pockets, and so forth. So I'm going to turn the camera off now, and I'm going to keep finishing up on the foundation of this one at least. And um, before I start embellishing this one, I will cut the papers and get to the same point. I'll do the foundation for the other journal also. They won't be identical as far as um, things that are in the journals because, like I said, the other one has more embellishments as part of the kit. So there will be differences, but I can kind of work on them together at, at the same time, I think. And if it gets complicated or confusing, I can put one of them away and finish up one. So that's where I am so far. I really adore this cover. I will probably cover up this because I don't like the title, Cowardice Court. But um, I'll put something pretty there. I'll make it. I'll just make it look pretty. So I hope that you like the beginnings of this journal and that you're interested to see the rest. And I will see you soon in the next video. Have a creative day today. Bye bye.